What's up Precision Junkies, Kellen back here with Inside Out Precision and uh, today we're going to be covering the difference between a three and a four fletch vein configuration on your arrow. So I've had a few questions as to what the difference is, why I prefer one over the other and I don't think there's any one right answer here. I think for different situations one may work a little better or worse than the other. So you know the most common vein configuration is three veins. Pretty much every tournament in the world has been won at one time or another with a three vein configuration. Um, for any sort of outdoor uh, target sh shooting or you know even like an axis arrow, like a hunting arrow that just with just a field point on it, three veins are going to do everything you need in terms of steering them. Um, you're going to get plenty of drag, they're going to steer that arrow just fine, and you're going to have really good success. Now where I think a four vein configuration can really come into play is if I'm shooting a really heavy arrow. So let's say, uh, for example, this is my, my indoor target shaft. This is an Easton X27. It's got 300 grains up front and it's a 2712. So it's a big, stiff, heavy arrow. It's coming in at like 780 something grains. So where I think a four vein configuration can help on an arrow like this is that if, if my bow isn't tuned perfectly or even if I just get a little torque in a shot, if this arrow comes out and that point wants to go one way or the other right out of the bow, it's so heavy that it's gonna to wanna to keep tracking in that direction. It's gonna, so it needs a lot of drag behind it to help correct it. Um, most indoor arrows are shot, you know, the most common is like a four inch or a five inch feather with like a 12 degree helical on it. And again, what that's doing is, you know, a feather because of, the, of its texture and allows air to get through it a little bit, it creates a lot more drag than a plastic vein does. Now, I, for a while I was shooting a blade rest and I, with my, my feathers, I had a five inch feather on there and I had a, you know, a bunch of helical on it and I was getting kind of inconsistent contact um, to where, you know, one, one feather would kind of contact a little more than another arrow and it just took a lot of playing around to get them to all contact exactly the same. Now when I switched to a drop away, obviously it doesn't really matter what what vein configuration you, you run because it's gonna fall out of the way and you're not gonna get any contact. Um, but I kept getting, just when I would draw the bow, one of my feathers would always rub up against, just barely catch the cable on my, my, uh, my bus cable. And it kept ruffling that one feather. And it just, I don't know if it affected the flight, but it just bothered me. So I went with a little lower profile, but because these are lower profile and they're shorter, I need more of them to achieve the same amount of drag. So same goes for like a hunting arrow. Um, if I'm going to shoot a really heavy arrow, if I'm over 550 grains probably, and I'm, especially if I'm shooting a fixed blade broadhead that's going to want to steer that arrow from the front, having a four vein configuration in the back will create more drag right out of the bow and it will really help stabilize that arrow quickly. Um, we built some arrows for a guy that was going to Africa. You know, they were FMJ, Dangerous Game 250s, they're like 17 and a half grains an inch or something. Um, and he had 50 grains of brass up front with 150 grain broadhead. So they came in at like, I mean, they're like 780 or almost 800 grains. And they had a big four blade broadhead on the front. And with a four vein configuration on that, it really, really helped. We used four just normal blazer veins and it really, really helped stabilize that arrow quickly. He had really good flight characteristics with those. Whereas in the past with just a three blade, there's not quite as much uh, drag there in steerage, and it's going, you know, the bow had to really be tuned perfectly to get consistent broadhead flight. So in that, you know, with heavy setups or large fixed blade broadheads, I really think a four vein configuration helps. Um, you know, on my arrow this year, this is my hunting arrow. This is an, just an Axis 300, and I actually went with a four, four vein configuration, but in the mini blazer. And I was just kind of playing around with this. Um, I don't think this flies any better than a three vein configuration in a normal blazer. I was just playing around with it, seeing you know how it shot, and I've been really, really impressed with it. You know, this is a Muzzy Trocar head here. Um, you know, they fly really well, but obviously, you know, you want good amount of steerage and drag on the back end to help. So that's what I had um, going, and they've they've been flying really, really well. These fly right with my field tips all the way out to about 60 yards. Um, these are the mini blazers, so they're 1.6 instead of two inches long, and they're only a half inch tall instead of three quarters of an inch tall. So they're lower profile and shorter, meaning less drag per vein. So I just added an extra one, 
and uh, they seem to fly really, really well. So I'm liking that. Now, part of your arrow's flight characteristics is gonna come from your helical and or offset on your fletching jig. So a helical is where your jig, fletching jig is actually set in a straight line so that the, you know, the top uh, of your vein and the bottom of the vein are on the same lateral line running down your shaft. Um, and then the jig itself has like a little twist or a helical to it. So a 12 degree clamp over the course of a six inch feather will have a 12 degree helical. Um, so over the course of like a two inch vein, you're only getting about a three degree helical or a four degree helical, um, which is plenty to steer, you know, any, any arrow. In fact, I wouldn't recommend going a whole lot more than that. And I'll tell you why here in a second. Um, an offset is where the clamp is actually straight and you just offset you know, the, the top of the vein will be slightly right or left of the bottom of the vein. So it's, it's a, in a straight line, but it's slightly off kilter. It's not just perfectly straight, it's slightly off a little ways. They both produce spin, they both produce drag. Generally an offset, if you're shooting like a blade rest for target, an offset will give you a little more clearance on your blade rest, so it's a little more popular in the target community. But if you're shooting a fall away, really either or is gonna work just fine. Um, now I just mentioned how you know more than a three to three or four degree helical can be too much, so it's the same with the offset. Um, on a three vein configuration, I wouldn't go ever over like a five degree offset or a twelve degree helical on a clamp, um, which again with shorter veins is going to be you know somewhere between like three and six degree helical. Um, and the reason is that if I get too much spin on that arrow, if it starts spinning too fast at too high of an RPM. When it gets out to distance, it starts slowing down so fast that it creates what's called the parachute effect. So the arrow's flying, it's spinning really fast, and as it starts to die in speed, it gets this like, it doesn't know where to go. Basically, it's the, the front of the tip is being, the front of the arrow is being slowed down too quickly by the back of the arrow, and it does this like, it doesn't know where to go. I kind of liken it to if I'm driving at 70 miles an hour and I just slam on the brakes, the car doesn't just stop in a perfectly straight line, right? It, it, it does a little, swerve. It's kind of the same with the arrow. So if I get too much of an offset, you know, if I do a 10 degree offset on a four vein or even a three vein configuration, it's going to spin that arrow really fast and be really accurate, probably out to like 30 or 40 yards. And then past that, your groups are going to blow up and you don't know what's going on. It's not your bow. It's inconsistent. And it's because you're getting that parachute effect. Now I'm not a physicist. I don't know exactly the forces at play that cause that. If you are a physicist or an engineer and can tell me, I would love to hear it. Um, but I, I just know I've seen it happen. You know, Levi Morgan has talked about this numerous times, how he never does more than a two degree offset on any four vein configuration and never more than like a three or four degree helical if he's using a, a you know, helical clamp um, because it will keep those arrows tracking well at distance. So that's something to consider when you're building it. There's lots of good fletching jigs out there. Um, you know, Bits and Burgers is a great one. The Last Chance Easy Fletch is a good one. Um, Boning makes one that's basically a knockoff of the Bits and Burger, so you can do a three, four, or even six vein configuration, which I think that's personally too much. But um, like I said, you can play around with them. So hope that answers some questions that you guys had. Uh, I had a few people ask me about this this topic, so I figured it'd be a good opportunity to make a video about it. Um, as usual, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment box below. Hit the subscribe button if you have not already. Um, if you have any. If you have an immediate question, the best way is to reach us on Instagram, which is inside underscore out underscore precision, and I'll do my best to get back to you in a timely manner. So until next time, keep it in the middle, and remember, precision is a decision.